Hello and welcome to Iconica. On this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Iconica Ensembles library from Steinberg. Iconica Ensembles takes the orchestral instruments and sections and combines them into carefully arranged, super playable ensembles that are truly inspiring and give you the ability to get results quickly when you're up against tight deadlines. Iconic Ensembles is also a great tool if you want to add orchestral elements to your productions easily without having to worry about arranging each instrument separately. Let's check it out. So right here I have Iconica Ensembles. As you can see I'm using Halion Sonic SC3 but of course Iconic Ensembles can be used in Halion Sonic 3 and Halion 6. Of course it can be used in any DAW as we support VST3, AU and AAX plugins. So let me show you how you can load the sounds in Halion Sonic SC3. All you need to do is click on the Load tab and then go All Instrument Sets and right there you will find Iconica Ensembles. So you click on that and then you find all the different presets for this library. As you can see there are quite a few sounds in there so it's really useful if you filter them by category for example brass, chromatic percussion, drums, strings and woodwinds. This will really help you find the sound you're looking for. So now let me show you what sounds we have included in Iconica Ensembles. Let's start with the strings. We have quite a few presets right there, but you will notice that we have some presets called Strings Full Accented Sustains, Strings Full Accented Tremolo, or Strings Full Ensemble. What that means is that you have the entire string orchestra laid down on the keyboard. So you can play from basses, cellos, violas, second violins, all the way up to first violins. So if I load the strings full ensemble right here, you will see that I have all the different instruments in the string sections. Now, of course, we have some dedicated presets for different ranges. For example, we have the strings high presets and the strings low. With the strings high presets, you get more of the first violins, second violins, and violas. So basically you get the soprano section and the alto section of the string orchestra. And the string lows give you the basses and the cellos. So maybe if you want to orchestrate a piece and you know that you're only going to use violins and violas and you don't want the low end, you don't want the cellos and the basses, then this preset might be more suitable for you. It will make your life easier. The same philosophy applies to the woodwinds and the brass. With the high woodwinds, for example, we get clarinets, flutes, and oboes. And with the low woodwinds, let's load it up, we get clarinets and bassoons. Same goes for brass. Under the drums and percussion category, we have the percussion map preset. And this is very useful because we have all the elements of the percussion section on the keyboard. It's laid out so I don't have to have separate presets for every different element. Moving on, let's uh, go to our chromatic percussion. And here we have glockenspiel, we have the marimba and xylophones, and of course we have the timpani. All very useful elements for uh, production or maybe if you want to do a quick mock-up. In Iconic Ensembles, we also have some special cinematic scenes which use combinations of instruments to create stunning style mood-based composing ensembles that also work perfectly as a source of inspiration. Let me show you a few of them. Let's try the strings first. As you can see, most of the presets start with the word strings, which is the category. Now, the ones that don't are the special cinematic scenes. For example, dark lines, fairy tale trills, soaring strings. These are some really, really cool sounds. Let me play a few of them. Dark Lines, for example, it's a very cool one. And on the interface, we can see how the instruments are arranged. So we have clarinets, we have bassoons, we have the basses, and we also have the cellos. Let's try the soaring strings as well. Let's move on to the brass category. And here we have, uh, I'm just going to play a preset that I like a lot. It's called Pirates. And this again has quite a few instruments. We have horns, we have trombones, we have basses, we have cellos. So let me play.
lots of fun. Under the woodwinds category, we have the cartoon orchestra and the situation room presets. So let me play the situation room for you. This preset does not contain only woodwinds, but of course it contains basses, it contains cellos, it contains violas. Let's try it out. Steinbeck partnered with orchestral tools and recorded Iconica exclusively in Funkhouse Berlin to achieve a homogeneous and distinct sound. This presets put special focus on smooth blending and range breaks to provide seamless playing experience. So when you have an orchestra under your fingertips, for example, you have your woodwind sections and you have your clarinets, your oboes, your flutes, your bassoons, the sounds blend very well and you can basically work your way across the keyboard without feeling any breaks or the sound cutting off. It's very, very nice and it gives you a lot of inspiration when you want to create a piece of music with an orchestra under your fingertips. So let me talk about the interface now, because that's a very important part of Iconica Ensembles. Now, because you're controlling multiple instruments or multiple instrument groups at the same time with the presets in Iconica, we have the orchestral diagram right here that helps you identify what instruments are included in that preset. So for example, in the Situation Room, we have clarinets, we have bassoons, viola, bass, and cellos. That gives you a quick overview of what you can expect from this sound, and of course, you kind of know what registers to play. So if you know that you're going to have basses and bassoons, you're probably going to go into the lower part of the keyboard rather than the higher part of the keyboard, which is a very cool thing. So immediately you get an idea of what's going on. Just under the orchestra diagram, we have our cell rack, and this is where you can load your different articulations. Right here we have the strings full ensemble preset, and this has five articulations loaded already. So we have staccatos, Pizzicatos, spiccatos, sustains, tremolos, and of course you can see the corresponding key switches just above the articulation name. Now, if I want to add more articulations, I can do it horizontally by clicking on this plus symbol right here, and I can change the key switch, and now maybe I want to add a spiccato in this cell. And maybe now I want to layer this with a different sound, maybe it sustains. To do this, I click on the plus symbol right here, and now I can layer all these articulations with other articulations. For example, with the new one that I created, I can just layer it with sustains. And now... So I have the nice attack from the spiccatos, but I also have the dynamics of the sustains. Of course, I have quite a few ways to control those articulations. If you click on layer, you will see that we have three ways of blending and selecting those articulations. In layer mode that we use right now means that both articulations are going to play at the same time. So I'm going to have both the spiccato and sustains at the same time. Now, if I change this to fade, I can select a controller like velocity or a CC controller or modulation wheel, and I can blend between them according to this fade value. For example, let's use modulation. And as you can see, when I use the mod wheel, I'm going to blend between the spiccato and the sustain. So if I have it all the way down, I will get spiccatos. And if I have the mode wheel all the way up, I get only the sustains. And I introduce the spiccatos once I turn it down. Until they disappear completely. So that's a very, very cool way of blending seamlessly between different articulations. Now the other mode is called switch. Now the switch mode is really, really cool because I can set up any controller 
set a threshold, and then the articulations will switch. So for example, if I have velocity as my controller, I can switch between spiccatos and sustains. Check it out. So I can do some amazing phrasing. And of course, I can have notes playing sustains and other notes playing spiccatos just because I have total control over the velocity. So a very, very cool articulation if you want to play effortlessly without worrying too much about key switches and all these things. Very, very cool mode. Moving on, we have the polyphony section where you can set your maximum polyphony. Next, we have the MIDI follow button right here. This is extremely useful if you want to change the settings of the articulations because when you select one articulation, you will get the correct settings down here. So spiccato, you will get the spiccato level. You can click on the sustains and you get the sustain level, the attack, the release, and staccatos, round robins, and so on and so forth. If you want to change the velocity response of the Iconic Ensembles, you just click on this cogwheel icon and then you have the velocity response right there. So you can change the curve according to your playing style or depending on your MIDI controller, you can make it harder or a softer response. So it's a very cool option to have. The tuning scale function lets you tune Iconica to a number of different tuning scales. By default, all programs are set to equal temperament. But you may want to change this to a different scale for artistic reasons, or a very useful application would be if you have recorded a real orchestra and you want to beef it up with iconic ensembles, well, it would be a little bit hard to detune or change the tuning of a real orchestra, especially if they're recorded with a different scale. But now, with iconic ensembles, you can select the scale and this will adapt to the tuning of your orchestra. We have a few options right there. We have the root key, which should ideally be set to the key of your piece. We have the amount, and we also have delay and fade so that you can control the transition between the equal temperament and the tuning scale that you've selected. Tuning scales can give a very nice flavor to your compositions. The difference is subtle, but it's really noticeable. So let me play a chord for you with equal temperament. So a D minor, and I'm going to switch to just. Go and experiment with the tuning scales, they're really cool. Next we have the microphone positions. Now let's move on to the mixer page. Let's click on the icon, and here we are in the mixer page. As you can see, here we have control over the microphone positions. So we have the close, we have the tree, the A, B, the surround, the main, depending on the sound. So the close position, let me just play the close position right now. It gives you a very direct, dry sound. It's great if you want to play like fast passages because it has a very good definition. Now the tree gives you a broader sound. And of course I can pan the microphone positions. So it can create some really interesting effects. Then we have the AB, let's load it. So if you want to load a mic position, you just click on the on off button just underneath the fader and of course we can solo the mic positions so as you can see the AB doesn't have so much of a direct sound but it helps you get this really wide open sound and of course we have the surround as well And of course, by blending the microphone positions, you can get completely different sound. Using the microphone positions, you can sculpt the sound of the Iconica Ensembles Orchestra. So for example, if you have 
a very busy production, a pop production or a heavy metal production and you want to add some orchestral elements, you might need to have a tighter sound. So you might want to use more of the close position rather than the surround position. Or maybe if you want to add a little bit of space uh, to a track and you want to have some nice orchestral elements in the background, you can use more of the surround mics and the tree mics. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. So don't be afraid to go to the mixing page and start playing with the different sounds coming from the different mic positions. Of course, if you want even more flexibility, you can still route those different microphone positions into a separate output and then you can process them in your DAW with compression, EQ, reverb, so you have more control over the sound of your orchestra. If you're using Cubase, you can import the key switches of the current program into an expression map with one click. Let me show you how you do this. So we have the strings full ensemble right here. We have staccatos, pizzicatos, spiccatos, sustains, and tremolos. Of course, these have their specific key switches already assigned. But in Cubase, I can go to Expression Map in the inspector and then click on it and select Import Key Switches. And that's it. Now Cubase has imported the key switches. Now let me record a MIDI part. Now when I open the key editor, I can see the articulations and dynamics lane right there. So I can select my articulations that easily. So I might want to have staccatos in the beginning and then when I reach those long notes, I might want to use sustains. So let's play it. So it's that easy. Halion Sonic SE3 is of course a VST3 instrument, which means it fully supports note expression inside Cubase. What you can do with note expression is you can take any individual note and change its parameters independently of all the other nodes that play at the same time. So for example, I can get this E3 here and change its pitch, its volume, panning. Let me try and give you an example. I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to change the tuning. So let me grab my tool right here and just do a pitch rise. And now let's play it back. So as you can see, this note changed its pitch, but the other notes that play at the same time were unaffected. So that's a very, very cool feature and it gives you more experimental options to use with the Iconic Ensembles library. If you want to layer more than one sounds in the Iconica Ensembles library, that's extremely easy to do. So for example, I have here Strings Full Ensemble. And let's say I want to layer it with the Pirates preset. So all I need to do is I need to go to the second slot on my Halion Sonic SE3 instrument and select the Pirates on this one. And of course, this works with MIDI channel 2. So all I need to do is go to MIDI and change the channel to MIDI channel 1 because that's what I'm going to be using. So this way I can play both sounds. And of course, in the MIDI tab right here, I have quite a few options. I can change the transposition so I can transpose the pirates one octave higher like this. And I can select the range of every instrument and I can also set the velocity range. So maybe I want the pirates to play only when I hit hard velocities like this. And this way I can build some really huge orchestral sounds. So your imagination is the limit right there. Hope you enjoyed this quick walkthrough of Iconic Ensembles. Thanks for watching, make some great music with it and we'll see you in the next one.